ಅಥಸ ಭಗವತ ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಮ ಸಂಬುತ ನಮೋಥಸ ಭಗವತ ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಮ ಸಂಬುತ ನಮೋಥಸ ಭಗವತ ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಮ ಸಂಬುತ Wow. So I'm still just enjoying that great wave of joy that arose in the room when the accumulated figure came out that everyone has helped uh, make happen in different ways and that this is going towards it's not just raising money but it's it's raising money to fight to purchase land that will be cared for and that will be used for practice for monastics and for lay community it's, it's very very auspicious and beautiful and so i have a lot of mudita and i'm really enjoying the the vibe here in the room the 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 collectiveness and the the uh, joy yeah and you know we were hearing earlier about well first of all people took the many people chose to take the five precepts the three refuges and the five precepts those precepts or those training precepts are a, an amazing support for our practice without them we you know we we can expend a lot of energy but then we lose it again and then we can do good but then we do harm and so we kind of we're keeping on it's like having a it's like having a hole in your bucket you know it never gets filled but with the uh, with sila with ethics and uh, care for each other and ourselves then that uh, there's a filling of the container with with goodness and wholesomeness and i'm just very aware of uh, the qualities the good energy that's being generated by everyone here individually and collectively so each person who's here and also online who's joining from the screen over there hi um you know it's you you're each bringing your own presence and and goodness and generosity and interest and maybe learning or maybe sharing so each person each individual is is bringing this and then together there's this this field of goodness being created it's it's very beautiful powerful and these things don't make the news you know the news is got a lot, we've got we get a lot of bad news it's pretty bad but uh, there are good things happening like right now <laughs> and so let's just take a moment to really enjoy that celebrate it that you're, you each of us are part of this goodness that is being generated right now in the world and it's a field it's a force it's energy it's not it's not nothing and no one of us could do that on our own but each of us can do something and then together collectively there's this there's this power of goodness that's that's generating it's beautiful and uh there's this word punya the buddha uses the word punya pali word which has been translated in english as merit i always feel that's a very limited a bit impoverished translation i actually don't know in thai i guess you you actually just say punya in thai and then you just know what it is and in english we have this word merit which to me sounds a bit um smaller than what it actually is so i just want to explore that uh, quality of punya a little bit with you and it's a it's an energy a good energy just as we're experiencing today that arises through good action it arises through not following harmful intentions that may arise so we don't necessarily start off you know all just good thoughts and being beautiful you know there's things that we struggle with there's there can be ill will in the mind and there can be maybe a, a feeling of um fear or or stinginess even and then uh, holding back and then and then we recognize oh that's painful and i don't want to follow that and then we 
see whether we can just behave a little differently to our old patterns. And uh, I don't know if uh, some of you probably have, you know, come from a very generous culture, I know that. Um, and some of us don't. So there may be a moment where you remember the shift from feeling, for me it's a very, very tangible moment, the shift from being a bit stingy, a bit fearful of giving, thinking, a being a bit suspicious of, of, of giving. I was raised that way. And, and, to, and then realizing, oh no, giving is it's enriching, it's, it's beautiful, it's freeing, it's, it, it's, it's a relief. Even if you don't have very much, just that movement of, from trying to keep for myself to wanting to give freely. It's, it's a beautiful shift of the heart. It's a, it's a whole life change, actually. It changes your life when you realize that that's, there's that ah, letting go. And it was, for me, it was in a monastery where I had that moment where I recognized that these people aren't asking anything from me. They are giving me everything. They're giving me a place to sleep. They're giving me food. They're giving me Dharma teachings. I've got access to a fantastic library. And this is in Amravati in England. And they're not asking anything. And then that just brought out this, this shift of just wanting to give and just realizing the freedom and the, and the relief, actually, of, of being generous. So I think everyone here probably is already way into that. But it's uh, so moving from the thoughts of maybe small smallness and and holding back into opening up and giving and stepping into this experience is it that generates punya. So even just not following unwholesome thoughts generates punya. And then when we, you know, actually generate good. When, when our mind is more geared, or when we take care of generating good thoughts and good intentions, that's punya being made then. And then acting on those, more punya. And then, don't stop there. Because it's not just, just that, that seems like it would be enough, you know, then we've, we've thought it, we've, had, we've restrained the unwholesome, we've cultivated the wholesome, and we've acted on the wholesome. The gifts have been given, the, the generosity has happened, okay. But don't stop there, because then we need to recollect that. Take that in. I think this is something that we can miss. Really taking in the punya, taking it into your heart. Letting yourself be filled by the goodness of your practice. Take a moment, breathe it in. Feel it. Feel it fill you. So I like to think of punya as an as a energy or of a kind of a nectar. I experience it as a kind of a nectar that just fills your heart and fills your being. And if you take it in in that way, it's quite wonderful. And it's not indulgent, it's not bad or indulgent to take that in, to, to take in the goodness of your, of your generosity and your ethics and your, your good conduct. You know, some of us may be learnt that it, you shouldn't think like that, you get big-headed if, if you think that way. But it's not about getting big-headed, you get big-hearted. You let your heart take in that, all that goodness and let it be stretched and nourished and filled by that. And then when we are filled, when we feel the filling of that goodness in our own being, then we can share it, share it generously for the benefit of all beings, all beings in all directions. So in the suttas, the Buddha actually only refers to punya as benefiting uh, those in the hungry ghost realm. So he says it specifically supports beings in the hungry ghost realm. And, you know, there are people, there are beings, you know, there's the realms that the Buddha speaks about, the different cos you know, cosmological realms. So a place that people go to that is, that is a place of endless craving. 
So it's a very, very difficult and painful place to be. But that uh, can also be experienced here in this world. There are people who are caught in that mind state right here in this world, right now. And so the sharing of merit is like, a, and it's also for me that, that sense of, of nectar, it's like you're sharing that nectar of goodness to relieve the craving, the endless craving of those caught in, in addiction, in, uh, in endless wanting. And this uh, society, you know, it's really set up to encourage wanting, to discourage contentment and satisfaction. It talks about satisfaction, promises satisfaction, but it's, uh, it's one of those kind of hollow satisfactions that doesn't last very long. So, uh, you know, the Buddha is pointing us to this. It's not, he's not saying you'll get everything you want. He's saying, when you let go of that wanting, it's just perfect. It's just perfect like this. It's perfect in its imperfection. Life becomes perfect in its imperfection. So we're not trying to become perfect and we're not trying to make the world perfect. And we're not you know, expecting that you know, as, we, as we practice and progress on the path, the world's going to get easier and, and nicer. Everyone's going to be nice to us. It doesn't really work like that. But uh, how we meet the world changes. And in that, in a way, everything changes. So, you know, we talk, so I'm speaking about the world. And uh, so what, you know, how is the world created? We, there's the news, there's what we hear, there's the media, the world news. There's a lot going on on the world news right now. And then there's our world, you know, maybe our, our family, our community, and what's going on there. Probably not perfect. Probably a few challenges out there. And then there's our inner world, and how we meet our experience inside. So if, if the way we meet our experience inside is, is full of judgment and and wanting and not wanting, if we, if we look inside and we feel that we're essentially wrong, there's something wrong with us, we're bad or we're wrong, or we're, some people, I'm the best, I'm better than everyone else. Some people have that one going on. You know, both of those are places of suffering. They're places of suffering. So, you know, the world, in a way, the world begins right here in our experience, in how we meet it. So right now we're all gathered together and we're doing this wonderful thing together, alms giving and generating actual material support and, you know, feeding each other and, and others out, you know, each other, all of a bigger each other. And, uh, and then generating this good energy. So the world is being created right here. We're creating, the, this is part of the world. We're creating this in the world right now. And that's true all the time. So what we are doing inside, what, how we meet ourselves inside, our experience inside, and how we relate to those around us is creating the world. So this is important, and how we pay attention. Also, this is this is part of creating the world. So what we ignore, what we attend to, what we get absorbed into, what we dismiss. You know, this this is all part of of how the world gets created. What where, where energy is put, where we put energy into, and attention is energy. Attention is energy. So it's really important to know to notice in your life where is the energy going, where is your attention going? And you know, there are so many distractions, very easily accessible distractions. So it's 
and and you know those those distractions, particularly the ones on your phone or on your laptop, they um, they they're designed to gener be they're generated by your attention. They're designed to get your attention. People are getting rich from your attention, so. Be careful who you're paying attention to and what you're paying attention to. And the Buddha is really inviting us to you know, pay attention to our, our body, not just the mind, but the body, to know this body, be with this body. So I just want to ask right now, just for a moment, what does it feel like? that body of yours, just in there, inside. How is it? What is your relationship with your body? Is there a friendship? Is it, are you friends? Or is it something you endure? Or are you somewhere a little bit aloof from the body? The mind is floating around somewhere above the body. That can happen. So you know, the Buddha is encouraging us to, to pay attention to the body, which is a most profound teacher. It's teaching us all the time. It's teaching the Dhamma all the time, the body. And to, to pay attention to the feelings that are going on in this body. The, not just emotions, but pleasant feeling, painful feeling, neutral feeling. Feeling tone, the sensations, to be aware. Because when we're not aware, we have an unpleasant sensation and, when, and then we react. We try and get away from it or we blame somebody else for it or we distract ourselves. And then we have a pleasant sensation and then we love that, want more of that, get more of that. And then we start to lose perspective on uh, the, the cost of that, you could say, the repercussions of that. And, and then a large part of our experience is neutral sensation, neither pleasant nor unpleasant, nothing in particular. So that's, we, we kind of go to sleep on that, we ignore that. So, uh, and then when we bring careful attention to our experience, our direct experience, how there's a painful feeling, I want to get rid of it. The painful feeling isn't bad, it isn't negative, it's just painful feeling. And then there's this extra piece of pushing away. And the pleasant feeling isn't necessarily good. Some, some are, some aren't. Isn't necessarily good, and, but there's this grasping. And uh, so we need to know, we need to be clued in to what's going on here in this body that's teaching us all the time. A neutral feeling that we ignore. We, you know, generating ignorance, ignoring. So to get familiar with this body as a teacher. What is it teaching us? It's teaching us about constant change. Every The feelings in this body right now I'm experiencing, changing all the time. The, the body itself, you know, we just ate a lovely meal and that changes our body. We're changed by that. It's, uh, it's being nourished by that. So change is going on all the time in the body. Never, never stops. Breath. A breath. By its nature, it's change. So this is this is a teaching that's going on right here with your in your body. Your your best teacher is right there with you every day, twenty four seven. It's there with you. It's part of you. And then. Um, Recognizing the different moods that pass through the mind, like the weather. Sometimes uplifted, sometimes depressed, sometimes fearful, sometimes um, bright and strong. And we have all of these different moods that go through the mind, like, just like the weather changes out here. All changing all the time. And then we take them as me. Oh, this is me, I'm this, I'm, I'm you know, whatever particular mood may be coming, going through, we think it's who we are. But we need to notice that those moods are just changing. They're just changing. It's there for a while, and then it changes. And then there's another one. 
And that's there for a while, and then that changes. And that we might have certain leanings, and then we can, we can guide our attention towards the more wholesome and the more beneficial, and then it, it changes the habits of the mind. So, uh, you know, if we have a tendency to feel a bit hopeless or a bit down, then we need to take care of our mind. You know, we need to take care of spending time with good people, taking in really wholesome stuff, you know, wholesome information through that phone or laptop or through a company. And, uh, and doing good and, and recognizing the good that we're doing. And then that starts to change the moods of the mind, so get more open and uplifted. And, uh, and then the, the content of the mind, the thoughts that are going on, those endless thoughts that go on and on and on, all sorts of thoughts going on in the mind. Just to get to know what are, what are the tendencies, what the, what's the volition of those thoughts? You know, are they, are they wholesome, are they unwholesome? Are they leading out of suffering or into more complexity? And recognizing we have some choice. We can't always, you know, we can't always choose what thoughts are arising, but we can choose where we put our attention. So attending to that which is wholesome and also attending carefully to that which is unwholesome in that we don't uh, encourage it, we don't strengthen it. So the Buddha urges us to frequently pay careful attention. Frequently pay careful attention to what is going on here and now. Not just now and again, you know, but frequently, throughout the day, checking in, seeing what's going on, which direction, where, where's, it, where's this leading? So we don't want to get micromanaging about it. You know, it's good also to have the big view of, of where we want to sort of aim towards. But we also need to check in and see what's going on. And as we do that, as we continue to, to generate goodness and to share the goodness and to uh, you know, hold back on the unwholesome, redirect our attention, and then also through our meditation practice you know, to, to generate wholesome states in the meditation. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's wholesome and sometimes we're just sitting through difficult stuff, sitting through painful memories or difficult things that, have, that are left in our, in our body and mind from, from past uh, challenges. But that's also really, really beneficial. So the Buddha speaks about uh, refrain from doing harm. It's like the nutshell of the Buddha's teaching. Refrain from doing harm do good, which you're doing an awesome job of, I have to say. Do good and purify the mind. So that purifying the mind is what happens in the meditation. Sometimes it's beautiful, sometimes it's hard. Don't worry, it's purifying the mind, it's good. And it leads to greater spaciousness, happiness, peace and well-being. And also, you know, when we're doing it together in this way, we, we become community, you know, we become Sangha that supports each other. So, you know, this, this, this coming together is to support the establishment of a monastery. And the, at the heart of a monastery are monastics, obviously. And at the heart of monastic life is the practice. It's uh, the ethical practice, the meditation practice, the practice of, of giving and sharing, sharing the Dhamma, sharing, you know, we share with each other requisites and so on. So this is at the heart of this beautiful coming together. So I'm very, grateful 
I'm very grateful to my venerable brothers here, um, Ajahn Kovilo and Ajahn Nisabo, for their for their real brotherliness. So it is, I don't always say, wouldn't always use that term. I wouldn't assume to say that with Lumpur Pasano, a little different. He's my elder, <laughs> Lumpur. <laughs> but um, it's I really appreciate um, our our brother monastics really recognizing the the value and the importance of the fourfold assembly. You know that that uh, the um, the bhikkhus and the bhikkhunis uh, we all are part of the community as the lay women and lay men, we're all part of the community. So this is a, a blessing and a gift and I'm just really happy to be here with you all.